At a crossroads in his career, Dennis Eckersley was traded to the Oakland Athletics. Not only would this move revive his career, but lead him to becoming one of the most dominant closers of all time. How so? Let's step into the portal and find out. Long before Eck was a World Series champion, MVP, and Cy Young Award winner, he was a lanky right-handed pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Drafted at only 17 years old, Dennis was very much on the team's radar by his third season in the minors. He further impressed his superiors with an impressive spring training in 1975 wowing manager Frank Robinson enough to break camp and earn a spot on the Major League roster. At 20 years old, Eck was heading to the bigs. Although he began his time in the majors as a middle reliever, he was quickly thrust into the starting rotation, making his first career start in May against the three-time defending champion Oakland A's. Despite the intimidating opponent, Eckersley kept his cool, tossing a complete game shutout. From that game on, he was a key member of the pitching staff. He made 23 more starts in his rookie campaign, finishing the year with 13 wins and a 260 ERA leading the Tribe in war, ERA, and strikeouts in the process. His next two seasons were solid. He recorded a career-high 200 Ks in 1976, but 1977 was an extra special year. May 30th went down in baseball history, as Dennis Eckersley no-hit the California Angels. One walk was the only blemish, as even those in the opposing dugout realized that they had fallen victim to greatness. Ultimately, the no-no was bookended by two other hitless stretches, culminating in 22 and a third hitless innings falling only two-thirds of an inning short of tying Cy Young's record set in 1904. The season only got better, as he was selected to his first All-Star game. He tossed two shutout innings in the American League 7-5 defeat, ending his evening with a strikeout of former MVP Steve Garvey. Eck closed out the 77 campaign with a 14-13 record, 3-4-3 ERA, and almost 200 strikeouts. His future was bright at 23, but the Tribe weren't so sure. Cleveland's front office cited high home run rates and trouble against lefties as concern towards Eckersley on the mound. They mentioned his unique delivery and figured his sidewinding pitching motion would cause arm problems. Despite two strong seasons as Indians ace, leading the team in war and other key categories both years, Dennis Eckersley was traded to the Boston Red Sox just a week before opening day. Sox skipper Don Zimmer was optimistic that Eck would bring Cooperstown caliber play to Beantown. Entering a new era of his career, nothing changed on the mound for Dennis. He was tremendous in his first season with the Red Sox, going 20-8 with a 2.99 ERA, finishing fourth in Cy Young voting. He was especially good at home, posting an 11-1 record at Fenway Park. The season may have ended in disappointment for Boston, but there was plenty for Eck to be proud of. 1979 was another successful year for the righty, but came with career-altering consequences. He tossed a career-high 17 complete games, at one point recording 7 in a row, something you'd never see in the present day. It was an impressive feat, even back then, but brought arm soreness that Eck would never be able to shake. Over the next couple years in Boston, Dennis developed back and shoulder problems as well adding to a body that was just begging for a rest. He was an all-star in 1982, but it was clear that this wasn't the same Dennis Eckersley the Red Sox had traded for a few years prior. 1983 was a disaster, as he produced an ERA over 5, losing more games than he won and posting career lows in several key categories. The following year, Boston began shopping Dennis to other teams. Cubs general manager Dallas Green had a couple rotation spots to fill, so he reached out to the Sox and wound up acquiring Eck and infielder Mike Brumley for Bill Buckner. We know what Buckner would do for Boston, but what was Dennis capable of in the Windy City? Green made another smart move, bringing in Rick Sutcliffe from Cleveland to join the rotation. Together, Eck and Sutt combined to win 26 games for the Cubbies, bringing success and stability to the pitching staff. Teammates commended Dennis for his hard work, as he was always dedicated to giving his all. They were rewarded with an NL East title, earning the North side as a trip to the postseason for the first time since 1945. Chicago went up 2-0 in their first ever NLCS, and sat just one win away from winning the pennant. Eckersley got the start in Game 3, but the Padres chased him from the game in the 6th inning. San Diego won that game and the next two, eliminating the Cubs and claiming their first pennant instead. Dennis Eckersley appeared comfortable in Chicago, with his numbers looking much better than when he left Boston. 1985 was an all-around quality season. He went 11-7 with an ERA just over 3 in 160 innings. Eck went the distance 6 times, his most in 3 years. It seemed that all was well for Dennis, but things would quickly sour in 1986. He developed tendonitis in his shoulder, leading to a miserable year. He posted a 4.57 ERA, lost almost double the amount of games that he won, and allowed the fourth most extra base hits in baseball. His ERA plus plummeted to 88, 12% below average and the lowest full season mark of his career. With the Cubs back towards the bottom of the NL East division, it was time to rebuild. He was traded to the Oakland Athletics in a five-player deal. Returning to his native California, Eck was unsure of what his role would be at the A's. Luckily for him, some smart decisions would change his career for the better, taking him to the next level. 
With pitching coach Dave Duncan's insight, Oakland manager Tony La Russa made the decision of sticking Dennis Eckersley in the bullpen. When Jay Howell developed arm problems that limited him to only 44 innings in 1987, Eck stepped into the closer role. Shorter outings put less stress on his body and allowed him to use his fierce competitiveness in high leverage spots. His ERA returned to around three, and he recorded his first saves in over a decade. He and Howell shared the team lead with 16 saves, but it was Howell, not Eck, who was dealt to the Dodgers in the offseason. This officially gave Dennis the closer role, a spot that would change the trajectory of his career. The Oakland Athletics were putting together something special, and Eckersley played a big part in the back of the bullpen. He was nothing short of dominant in 1988. He recorded an MLB Best 45 saves while striking out 70 and walking only 11 in nearly 73 innings pitched. He was named to the All-Star Game for the third time in his career, and finished top five in both Cy Young and MVP voting. The team experienced great success as well, winning their first of three straight American League pennants. Eck was named ALCS MVP that year, recording a save in all four of their wins over Boston. In the Fall Classic, Dennis wasn't nearly as sharp. He ended up on the wrong side of baseball history in Game 1, allowing a game-winning home run to pinch hitter Kirk Gibson. The A's would go on to lose the series, falling to the Dodgers in five games. It's rare that a pitcher's career path completely changes over halfway into their career, but it truly might have saved Dennis Eckersley. He was a totally different pitcher, no longer the workhorse, but rather a trusted ninth inning guy, responsible for securing Athletics victories. 1989 was a special year for everyone involved. The Oakland Athletics won the AL West, winning 99 games and reaching the postseason for the second year in a row. Eckersley got more comfortable in the closer role, recording 33 saves and lowering his ERA to 1.56, a career best at the time. Arguably the most impressive piece of X game was how incredible his control was. In over 57 innings, he only allowed three walks. Since 1901, he's the only pitcher to do this. At 34 years old, Dennis Eckersley had the best year of his career, and would only get better. His fine play carried over into the 89 postseason, as he recorded saves in three of the A's four ALCS wins over Toronto, including the pennant clinching Game 5. For the second year in a row, the Oakland Athletics were heading to the Fall Classic. This time around, it would be much more positive for the boys in green and gold. Facing their Bay Area rivals, the A's were unstoppable, sweeping the Giants to win their first World Series title in 15 years. Fittingly, Dennis Eckersley was on the mound for the final three outs, earning the save and cementing his place in baseball history as a champion closer. You would think that one's peak would be a season with record-setting control, ending with a World Series victory, but somehow, Dennis Eckersley kept getting better. 1990 was nothing short of unbelievable, and is part of the reason we're on this journey in the first place. On April 15th in Seattle, he recorded his 100th career save, becoming the first and only player in MLB history to toss 100 complete games and 100 saves. Eckersley was truly in a league of his own, with a club all to himself. No one in the game's history displayed the dominance of a starter and closer in such a way. He continued to make headlines, allowing only five earned runs all season. This resulted in a .61 ERA, a record that stood for over 20 years until Fernando Rodney barely bested it in 2012. He began the season with 30 Ks and zero walks, becoming the first pitcher since at least 1900 to begin a season with that kind of control. From August 1989 to June 1990, Eck went 41 games without walking a batter, an MLB record that still stands to this day. He recorded 48 saves, becoming the first relief pitcher in baseball history to record more saves than base runners allowed, an insane stat to think about. He was selected to another All-Star game, and once again received Cy Young and MVP votes. Similar to 1988, Eck was sharp in the ALCS, but lacked his quality stuff in the Fall Classic, as the A's fell victim to another sweep, this time at the hands of the Cincinnati Reds. World Series or not, Dennis Eckersley's 1990 has gone down as one of the most dominant pitching seasons of all time. As Oakland's championship window was closing, Eck came back down to earth a bit in 1991. He was still great, grabbing 43 saves and making another Midsummer Classic appearance, but it would just be a prelude to what would be his last great season, the climax of his remarkable career. If 1990 was the most dominant pitching season from a closer, then 1992 was the most rewarding. Dennis received Cy and MVP votes in 1990, but didn't necessarily come close to taking those awards home. In 1992, he wouldn't be denied proper recognition. He led all of baseball with 51 saves, a career high, and posted a 1-9-1 ERA. He was lights out in high leverage spots, with opponents batting a baffling 158 with runners in scoring position. Awards voters just couldn't help themselves. Eck was too good. He was awarded AL Cy Young and AL MVP, making him only the third relief pitcher to win both in the same season and would be the only pitcher to do so until Justin Verlander in 2011. The late 80s and early 90s had made Dennis Eckersley a legend, all while in the latter half of his baseball life. Eck may not have had another iconic season like 1990 or 1992, but he still proved his worth as his career began to wind down. In the midst of a poor period of athletics baseball, Eck remained a promising piece. 
He recorded 36 saves for an A's team that only won 68 games in 1993. He wasn't necessarily sharp, but definitely wasn't part of the problem. Dennis spent the next two seasons in Oakland, pitching about average as they continued to focus on the ball club's future image. Manager Tony La Russa left after the 1995 campaign, taking his talents to St. Louis. He brought some friends with him to the Cardinals, most notably pitching coach Dave Duncan and now 41-year-old Dennis Eckersley. He traded for the veteran closer, keeping him with the masterminds behind his career resurgence. Over two years in the Lou, Eck recorded 66 saves, pitching above average into his early 40s. The Cards reached the postseason in 1996, and Dennis was masterful, tossing seven shutout innings between the NLDS and CS. They fell to the Braves and missed the playoffs in 1997, but Eckersley's stint in St. Louis was by no means disappointing. In 1998, he returned to a familiar place, reuniting with the Boston Red Sox. He spent what would be his final season as the setup man of Tom Gordon, but managed to record one final save, his 390th. 1,071 games later, at 43 years old, Dennis Eckersley called it quits. One of the most versatile pitchers of all time had wrapped up a one-of-a-kind career. There's no baseball resume quite like Dennis Eckersley's. Pitchers have transitioned from starter to closer, or the other way around, but no one has had the level of success that Eck did. Not only did the move to the bullpen give his career new life, but set him apart from other elite arms. In 1999, he was celebrated at the All-Star Game as a member of MLB's All-Century Team. In 2004, his first year on the ballot, Eckersley was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. The following year, the Oakland Athletics retired as number 43. He remains the franchise leader in walks per nine, games pitched, strikeout to walk ratio, and of course, saves. As mentioned earlier, he's the only player in baseball history to record 100 complete games and 100 saves. His 390 career saves ranked ninth all time. X sets himself apart with his 197 career wins, as no one else on the top 10 saves list has more than 90 victories. It can be challenging for any pitcher to find success on the highest level, taking on the best bats on the planet. But Dennis Eckersley wasn't like any other pitcher. Whether starting or finishing a game, you just knew that he'd give you his all. Maybe there was some magic that helped propel Eck, but smart coaching decisions and ultimate competitiveness turned him from great to legendary, and gave his career extended life that even he couldn't have imagined. In more ways than one, Dennis Eckersley was in a league of his own. This has been the Baseball Time Machine. Thanks for traveling with us. We here at Baseball Time Machine appreciate you spending time with us. To celebrate our recent journey, crack these codes for a chance to win a mystery artifact. Safe travels.